okay now we are going to continue chapter number 4 and we are discussing the ip addressing okay ip addressing now as you know that ip address it is basically 32 bit identifier okay and 32 bit identifier that identify a host or a router interface basically ip address is not assigned to a system it is basically assigned to the interface to the lan card you can see this a router it has three interfaces this one this one this one so each interface will have its own ip address so basically ip address is assigned to the lan card to the network adapter card to the network interface okay so each interface it has ip address and this ip address is 32 bit okay and this ip address in 32 bit it is stored in a special format first byte dot second byte dot third byte dot fourth byte okay so each byte is separated by a dot this is the decimal representation of ip address and this is the binary representation this is the first byte 2 to 3 it is represented in binary form like this way 1 it is represented in this way okay so basically ip address it is a 32 bit identifier and it identifies a host or router interface so if a host has three interfaces three lan cards then each will have a ip address so the system has three ip addresses the interface is what interface or lan card it basically connects the host or router to the physical link so basically the lan card it connects a machine to the link to the communication link normally usually a host it has only one or two interfaces one for wired and one for wireless okay but a router it has multiple interface but router it has more than two interfaces okay why because the router functionality is that it receive a packet and then it forward it further on uh, on the best path but a host whether it is a source machine or destination it basically generates the data where the user sets okay so a router it typically have has multiple interfaces while host it has typically two interfaces one for wired and one for wireless ip addresses is associated with each interface so each interface is ip address so if a host has two interfaces then it will have two ip addresses if a if had if a router has five interfaces so it will have five interfaces okay and the ip addresses it is represented in a first byte dot second byte dot third byte dot fourth byte so this is the special representation of ip address this is the decimal representation and this is in the binary equivalent okay now how are ip how are interfaces connected so we will learn about it in chapter number 5 and 6 a wired interface this is a wired interface it is connected by ethernet switches so this is the wifi interfaces it is connected uh, by wifi by base station so we don't know uh, don't need to worry about how one interface is connected to another because you can see that uh that this interface it is connected with this interface this interface is connected with this interface okay so we will discuss it later on so how they are uh, like how they are connected we are have different interconnecting devices one is router one is switch one is hub so we will discuss their functionality later on okay but for now we assume that the a router it has more than one interfaces in a host it has one interfaces okay now the ip address it has basically two parts and we will discuss it one is called subnet part one is called subnet part or high order bits and one is called host part you know that in this subnet 
A subnet is the collection of interfaces that are interconnected without a router. You know, if you want to access from this interface to this, so you don't need to pass through this router. You can access directly. But if you want to move from this interface to this interface, so you have to move through router. Okay. So what is a submit? Basically, these are the device interfaces with the same submit part that they can physically reach each other without passing through the router. Okay. So this is called subnet. In a subnet, you knew you know that for example, this is IP address two two three dash one dot one dot one dot one. This is two two three dot one dot one dot two. So you can see that in these IP addresses, some prefix are common. For example, you can see two two three dot one dot one. It is present in this two two three dot one dot one is present in this IP address. 223.1.1 is present in this IP address and 223.1.1 is present in this address. So this common prefix it is called subnet part or it is called network part. And you can see that 1, 2, 4 and 3. These are different. So this is the host byte. This is the host part. Yeah, lower part or host part. Host bit. Yeah, host byte. Similarly, you can see in this subnet all these systems they have IP address common prefix 223.1.3 223.1.3 223.1.3 this is the subnet part or this is called high other bits or this is called common prefix or this is called network part and 27 the last byte 1 here the last byte and 2 here the last byte this is called host part okay so a network and that's why we assign consecutive IP addresses in the network part. We will discuss it also later on. Okay. So this network it consists of three subnets. First subnet is this one. Second subnet is this one. And third is this one. In a, a subnet, you can move from one interface to another inter interface without passing through the router. Okay. And if you want to move from one subnet to another subnet, then you have to pass through the router. Okay. For now. Okay. Now suppose that you want to find that uh, suppose you are going to find that how many subnets are there. Okay. So if you remove this route this router inter this router interface, then this is the island. So this is the isolated network part. They can reach to each other without passing through the router. So this is one subnet. This is another subnet, and this is the another subnet okay so this when ip address has 223.1.1.0 slash 24 so slash 24 this represents common prefix common prefix means that the first 24 bits these are the network part that we have already discussed it in the uh, prefix matching here in this subnet the first 24 bits that is the first byte 8 bit second byte 8 bit so 8 by uh, 8 bits so this is 16 bits and third byte so this is 24 bit these are network parts and these will be same these three bytes will be same here 223.1.2 223.1.2 223.1.2 they are same here for each and every host okay for each and every interface so this is called subnet part or this is called the network or this is part called subnet mask. Okay, we will discuss it also later on. Now, suppose how many subnets are there in this figure? So this is one subnet. And what is its network address subnet mask? So 223.1.1. 223.1.1, it is common in all of these IP addresses. So 223.1.1 slash 24. First 24 bits are common. Here this is also one subnet. Because if you want to move from this house to this house or from this house to this house, you don't have to move through routers. So 223.1.9, 223.1.9, these are common bits, common prefix bits are the subnet network part of for this subnet. Similarly, this is another subnet, this is another subnet, this is another subnet, this is another subnet. 
okay so we have how many subnets one two three four five six okay now we are going to discuss another important concept and this is called class full addresses okay and how they were originated so basically started now in the class a addresses in the class a addresses the first bit of the first byte this is the first byte this is the second byte this is the third byte this is the fourth byte so the first byte it is the network part and the first bit it is zero always it is zero always okay so it is fixed and the remaining seven bits of the first byte they can change so what could be their values their could their values could be zero 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 their value could be zero zero one zero 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 one zero and so on up to one one okay so when all these seven bits they are zero zero so this whole byte it will be represented through zero when this this bit is fixed it will be always zero when this these byte are zero 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 one so it this whole byte will become one and when this whole when this seven bits they become one one so this whole byte it will become 127 so in class a addresses the first bit of the first byte it is zero always and the remaining seven they can be they can be zero 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 one zero and so on so what could be their possibility of options so the first byte it is reserved for network part this is the network part and the remaining they are host part the remaining three bytes they are host part so you can see that the network part it contain eight bit how many bits eight bits the first byte but in this eight bit the first bit is zero always so how many bits are remaining seven so there are two to power seven possible values for the first byte to the power seven so this value can could be ranged from zero one up to 127 when all the seven bits are one and the first bit is it should be always zero so you can see that the class a addresses in this class a addresses the first byte is reserved for network part and the, in the first byte the first bit is zero always it is fixed and the remaining seven bit values can be changed so there are two to power seven possibilities so from starting from zero to one two up to 127 and how many hosts can be there so you can know that for host we have three bytes so three bytes means 24 bits to two to power 24 possible host can be there in a network for example if we have an ip address one dot static static so in this ip address we can have 2 k power 24 host all these 2 k power 24 host they will have one value in the first byte this will be the network part this is will be called common prefix okay now in the class b addresses how it works in class b addresses the first two bytes they are reserved for network part but the first two bits in the first byte they are fixed one zero they are fixed one zero so it means that the network part it contains 16 bits first two bytes but in the first two bytes the first in the first byte the two first two bits they are fixed so remaining are how many six bits are of the first byte and eight byte of the second byte eight six bits of the first byte and eight bits of the second byte so they becomes 24 6 plus 8 24 so there are 24 bits for the network part so when one zero it will be fixed in each and every ip address it will be fixed and you can see that one uh, one zero is fixed and the remaining bits they can be changed for example these are zero 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 
so when this byte it will become 128 and this byte will become 0 when this is 10 and 00 and this is 001 this so you can see that this byte will be 128 and this byte will be 1 so this move up to 191 255 when these remaining 14 bytes they can be changed from 0, 0, 1, 0 and so on. so there are possibly 2 to power 14 possible network numbers this is called network number this is called one network number this is called another network number so we can have network number up to starting from 128 to, to uh, from 128.0 to 191.255 okay so you can assume that the in the class a addresses the first byte its value was the first byte value it can start from 0 up to 127 and the class b addresses the first byte it can have the value starting from 128 up to 191 okay so from the first byte value of an ip address we can identify that whether it's belong to class a address or class b address okay so in the class b addresses we have two bytes for host the remaining two bytes are for host so it means that 16 bits are for host so how many host can be there it, they, there can be 2 to power 16 host so if we have a network address 128.0 steric steric so it means that there could be 2 to the power 16 host okay and each host will have 128.0.0 so these two values will be common they will be common prefix okay this is called the network part similarly we have class c address okay in the class c addresses the three bytes the first three bytes they are reserved for for what for network part and so these three bytes they becomes 24 bits but in these 24 bits the first three bits of the first byte they are fixed they are fixed to 110 110 they will be fixed in each and every ip address 110 will be fixed so the remaining five bytes five bits of the first byte and 16 bit of the second and third byte so it becomes 21 byte 5 bits plus 8 13 13 plus 8 21 bits so there are 21 bits of the network part that can be changed from 00 to 11 so if these value are 00 so it means that this value will be 192 this byte will be 0 0 0 this byte will be 0 so this is the binary representation and this is its decimal equivalent okay similarly this one and this one up to this okay when all bits are 1 then it means that this byte will become 223 this will become 255 this byte will become 255 so you can see that here we have 8 bit for host 8 bit for host so in, in a network, for example, this is a network address 192.0.0.0. So how many hosts can be there? There can be 2 to the power 8. 2 to the power 8 means 255 host could be there. So theoretically. Okay. So this is the class C. So you can note that the class C addresses its first byte start from 192 up to 223. And the class B address its first byte start from 128 up to 191 similarly from the first the class a address it start from 0 up to 127 okay so when you when for example we have an ip address suppose this is the ip address so by using the value the decimal value of the first byte 219 we can identify that whether it belongs to class a class b class c so 219 so you can see that the this ip address is had the first byte 219 so the class a address it has the value from 0 to 127 so it doesn't fall in this list the second byte it has the value from 128 class b it does have the value from 128 to 199 191 so this 219 also doesn't fall and, and the class c address it has the value from 192 223 so 219 it falls in this range so it belongs to class c address 
So when it belongs to class C disk, so we know that in class C disk, first three bytes are network part. So these three bytes are network part 219, 34, and 5. They are the network part. They are the network part. So three. So this is the common prefix. This is the common prefix. Okay. Similarly, uh, when it this is the IP address 145, 56, 7, 80, 89. So by using the decimal representation of the first byte, we would like to identify that whether it is class A this, it is class B this, or class C this. So you can see that 145 it doesn't fall in this range. 145 fall in this range. So it is the class B this. In class B this is there are two bytes in common. There are two bytes network part. So <coughs> 145 and 56 this is the network part. These two first bytes they are network part and the remaining is the host part. Similarly 194.5.5.5 this is IP address. So by using the decimal representation of the first byte 194 so it falls in this range. So it, it belongs to class C. So here the three bytes are the network part. Three bytes are common prefix. Three bytes are common prefix. Three bytes are first three bytes are the network part. 195.5.5 and this last byte it is the host part. So I am saying that by when uh, by using the first byte the, the, the value of the first byte of an IP address we can identify that whether it belongs to class A, class B, class C and we identify that this IP address it belongs to class C then we can identify that in the class C addresses we have three bytes first three bytes for the network part these are the common prefix and the last byte it is the host part okay so it is very easy but this class full addresses it has some problems it has some problems so we are going to discuss what are the problems so the limitation of the class full addresses is that <coughs> suppose that we want that in host that in organization it has 260 host how many host 260 host so what so it should get the ip addresses of class a class b class c okay <coughs> so you know that in class a addresses we have how many host we have in class a addresses we have how many host in a network we can have up to 2 k power 24 up to 2 to the power 24 in a class b this is we can have the host up to 2 to the power 16 in a network in the class c addresses we can have the host up to 2 to the power 8 okay so if you want in if an organization have 260 hosts then it should get the ip address of which class if it takes class c address then in class C it is we know that we can have up to 2k power in class C we have the last byte it is a host part so in last byte it contains 8 bits to 2k power 8 to 2k power 8 means up to 255 host could be there in a network since we have 260 host we have 260 R so we will need 2 IP addresses 2 IP addresses for example 1 IP address with 200.1.1 so in this IP address we can have up to 255 host and the remaining 10 host could be from this addresses. So we need two IP addresses. Okay. So <coughs> but normally the organization they often uh, they often prefer to use one IP address. Okay. So if they if the organization takes two class C addresses, then how many addresses are total there? So there are total hosts. 255 here and 255 here so 5 10 host are there in this for these two IP addresses but we need we are to be, but the organization it has 260 host so 5 12 minus 260 so it means that 260 IP addresses they will be used 260 host are there but out of 5 12 260 host will be used 260 uh, IP addresses will be used but the remaining 250 IP addresses they will be unused they will be unused and if they are unused so they cannot be used by other organization why 
because this network part is when assigned to a organization so it means that all host of that ip addresses are assigned to this organization this ip address cannot be used somewhere else okay so it means that this organization has two ip addresses and it has 260 hosts so 260 ip addresses are used but the remaining 250 ip addresses are unused so it it basically lead to ip address depletion it basically lead to the wastage of ip addresses space okay so if suppose for 260 hosts the organization take class b address one address so it will have one address for example it have 150.1 so in class b this is the two and the last two bytes they are reserved for host the last two bytes are reserved for host okay for host part so if you can see that in class b this is we have first two bytes network part and last two bytes are uh, reserved for uh, host part okay for the last two bytes are reserved for host so it means that we have 2 to power 16 host we can have 2 to power 16 host so in this case you can see that you can see that when the class B address is, is taken, so we have 2 to the power 16 host, 2 to the power 16 IP addresses, and each IP address will have 150.1 common prefix. Okay, but but this organization has 260 host, so it means that 260 minus 216, so we can have, uh, for example, up to 65,000 IP addresses unused. So these 65,000 IP addresses there unused means these IP addresses cannot be used by some one other organization okay so these are wasted these are wasted so that's why in the class full addresses we have this wastage we have this wastage so this limitation is addressed by another type of IP addressing scheme we call it cedar cedar means classless addresses classless addresses mean that now we don't have one byte or two byte or three byte for the network part but how many bits are needed for host for example if we need uh, suppose uh, we need that we should have uh, nine bits you know if, uh, for 260 host if you want so how many bits are enough for to represent 260 so nine bits are enough so if nine bits are, are, are for host part so nine minus 32 because total IP address is 32 bits so 9 uh, 32 minus 9 it becomes 23 so 23 bits will be network part 23 bits the common prefix these will be the network part and the remaining 9 bits the 8 bit of the last byte and the first uh, in the last bit of the, uh, of the third byte these from here to here they will be the host part the last byte is a whole and the second last byte is first is its last bit they will be the host part and the remaining bits 23 bits they are the common prefix they are the network part okay <coughs> similarly you know that if suppose we have a network and it has a seven host how many host seven host so it needs three bits how many bits three bits so three bits will be host part and the remaining they will be network part okay so if three bits are network of host part to so two to the power three eight so two to the power three is is equal to eight so there are total eight host eight ip addresses but in this eight ip addresses seven ip addresses are used one ip address is unused okay so you can see that by using classless addresses the wastage of ip addresses it is reduced that how many hosts do you have you should have that many bits as a host part and the remaining can be used for network part so you can see that here the network bits they can be anyone that here the three bits are host so th 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 uh, so uh, uh, we have total how many uh, uh, there are 32 bits so 32 minus uh, minus 3 32 minus 3 it is 29 it is wrong it should be 20 it should not be 21 it should be 29 so the 29 bits these first bits are common okay so they are network parts okay so the cedar v for the cedar as we know that in the class a addresses 
from the first byte value we can identify that whether it is class A, class B, class C. And once we have identified that this IP address it belongs to class C, then we can know that the class C has three bytes fixed for the network part. But in CDAP, we have we don't know that whether you know that here the uh, it has the 23 bytes common and here it has 29 but it's not 21 it is 29 the first 29 bits they are the network part and both have 200 200 so we don't know whether it is uh, there are 23 bits first 23 bits are network part or 29 bits are network part so that's why we represent it uh, we with cedar we we represent slash 23 so slash 23 means that in this ip address first 23 bits are network part and in this the it, it, this is not 21 this is 29 so in this ip address is the first 29 bits are network part this first 29 bits are network part it is the subnet the first 29 bits are subnet mask and here the first 23 bits are subnet mask so that's why in the cedar we use slash 23 we explicitly define that how many bits are the network parts okay but in the class full addresses we don't need to specify that how many bits are the network part why because the first value of the byte it can represents that whether the this IP address belongs to class A, class B, class C. So therefore, we with the class full addresses, we don't use slash 23. We don't explicitly specify the network number, the network bits. Why? Because the first byte value, it can identify that whether it belongs to class A, class B, class C. And once it is defined that this IP address belongs to class C, then we can know that this class C address is had three bytes for the network. So that's why we don't explicitly mention that how many bits are the network part with the class full addresses. But with the class list addresses, we must have to explicitly specify by using slash 23 or slash 24 value that the first 23 bits are the network part or first 29 bits are network part or first 21 bits are network part. So with the classless addresses we have to specify the network math explicitly and the network math are the first network bits they are specified by using the slash value. Okay. Now we are going to discuss another advantage. What is the advantage of this network part and host part? okay so as you know that for example this is the router this router has to maintain the routing information of all host so these are the host how many hosts are there suppose there are 224 host uh, 255 host and each host has the 223.1.1 common you know this ip address it has 223.1.1.1 they said 223.1.1.2 so 223.1.1 is common in this IP address common in this IP address common in this IP address so it can be represented like this 2223 223.1.1 that static 24 so this means the first 24 bits first 3 byte this byte this byte and this so these first 3 bytes are first 24 bits they are network part they are common they are common so you know that there are 2 k power 55 host so in this router we should have 2 k power 24 25 IP, IP, IP entries but we don't as you know that these uh, three bytes the first three bytes they are common so what we do so we store the common prefix as you know from the prefix matching we, we store common prefix to 223.1.1 steric 24 so this one entry it represents the all the networks all the host in this network suppose there are 2 k power 55 host so these two 255 host we don't need here 255 entries but we just need only one entry and this entry it can specify that it can be the ip addresses of you know the 223.1.1 it is fixed and this steric means it can be wild card it can be any value 1 2 3 4 5 okay so that's why we maintain by using common prefix or the network part we can 
at the prefix matching we can represent one entry one entry in the forwarding table of this router it can represents the all 255 host okay because you know that if uh, suppose that if this host wants if this host wants if this host wants to move to this host okay so for all of them this is the up to here this path is common this path is common whether you want to move for this house to this house whether you want to move to this house whether you want to move this house okay so this is the for example if you want to send the uh, dog to Peshawar so from Karachi to Peshawar so if you are moving to uh, if you want to distribute the dog to 100 user from Karachi to Peshawar okay so first you have to bring their dog to the Peshawar so from the Karachi to Peshawar the route is common so here the route from here to this network it is common and this network it's what is its ID what is the common bits in this network so in this host all of these host they have first three bytes common 223.1.1 these are common so this is the network number this is the city address this is the network address okay so we maintain only the network address in the routing table okay so by using the prefix so that's why the ip addresses are assigned consecutive in the network why so that they have the common bits they have common prefix they have common prefix and why if they have the common prefix then in each router we will maintain only one entry of the that that is the for the common prefix that will be maintained so it reduce the number of entries in the forwarding table so we have already discussed it in the edge in the common prefix magic okay now suppose that you know that how many net networks are there this is the one network so we need one entry okay this is the another network subnet so we need one entry for this network this is the another network you know uh, one nine uh, uh, one nine to two two three dot one nine this is the one network one two two three dot one three two two three dot one three this is another network so for each network we have one entry okay so how many entries we have how many networks we have for example this is one two three four five five so we have five networks so we need five entries okay so similarly uh, but how many host are there for example there are 1000 host so we don't maintain the entries for host but we maintain the entries for network okay because if you want to move for example this packet this is the packet this is this is the machine it has the source IP address 223.1.2 this is the machine it want to send this packet destination is 223.1.4 so if want to move this packet to 223.1.4 this is the IP address so this packet should be first moved to this network okay and what is the network number this is the network number this is the common prefix so it is stored in the table okay so when this packet arrives at the router so the router will match with this entry so you can see that 223.1.1 223 it is present in each and every router each and every entry in this router it has 223 so it is common first byte is common in all entries now the next bit next byte will be checked the next byte is 1 next word one is also common in all entries so all entries match next we will match the third entry the third entry is one so the third entry one is here present in only in this entry not in this so it means that the the common the longest common prefix matching here this ip address destination ip address the first byte is matched with all entries the second byte is matching with all entries but the third byte it is matching only with this one so the longest prefix matching in this that this ip address is first three bytes are matching with only this ip address and the two bytes are matching with the rest so the longest is this one this first three bytes are 
are matching with this entry so this will be the distance this entry will be used so for this entry the the packet should be forwarded to this ip address so the packet will be forwarded to this uh, link okay so you know that this is the advantage of network number of common prefix of the subnetting that the routing table size it is reduced Router table size is reduced. So in each router, we don't maintain the the routing table or the entry for each host, but rather we maintain the entry for the network. Okay, for the network part. So you know that here are two fifty host, but we don't maintain two fifty entry. We just maintain one entry, and one entry is representing the network. And what is the network number? The network number is the first. Common bits, first common prefix bit. So in this all IP addresses, the first common prefix bits are two two three dot one. So this is the network part. Okay, network number. So this will be stored. So this is the advantage of the network number, and this is the advantage of common prefix matching. Okay. So then we will discuss the DCP later on. Okay. I think it is finished.